Okay, so in this video, we will be talking about our chemical bonds and what uh, some properties of them as well as some molecular shapes. So in chemical reactions, bonds are broken or formed. Um, so one thing to remember is the strength of bonds. So double bonds are stronger than single bonds, triple bonds are stronger than double bonds. So this little chart on the bottom, single bonds are the weakest, triple bonds are the strongest. So one analogy I like to think about it about this is uh, having the bonds are kind of like elastic. Bonds like to bend and stretch just like elastic does. So let's say you have only one rubber band, that's going to be like a single bond. But if you had two rubber bands, it is harder to push and pull. It's a little bit stronger, like a double bond is a little bit stronger. And then if you have three rubber bands, it's again, a bit stronger. Okay, and then molecular structure and shapes. Um, all molecules have a 3D shape. So even though we have been drawing them this far flat, they really have a 3D configuration. Additionally, sometimes the 3D configuration is a little bit different depending on if you have more or less electrons. So electrons, just like magnets, do not like to be around each other. So it's kind of like putting the same side of two magnets together. They're going to repel each other. Electrons are the same. They want to be as far apart as possible. So if we have four things around one central atom, we want them to be as far apart from each other as possible. So having them in a flat surface is going to mean they're 90 degrees away from each other. Whereas if we use our 3D space, we can get them further away. How we draw this is a 3D shape or how we predict it is using VSEPR, which stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion. What it does is it predicts the most stable molecular, stable arrangement and molecular shape of a molecule by placing electron groups and bonds as far apart as possible. Okay, so we're going to start going through each of the different shapes pretty quickly. So a central atom with two bonding electron groups. So um, this is only two groups on the outside, so we don't have any lone pairs or anything like that on this central atom, such as CO2. The angle for this is going to be 180 degrees in order to get those two groups as far apart as possible, and our shape is going to be linear. Okay, so a structure that looks like this, let's practice the Lewis dot structure and predict the shape of HCN. So pause the video and do it yourself and we'll go through the answer. So HCN, the Lewis dot structure, looks like H with carbon in the middle and then nitrogen. In order to fulfill our octets, we're going to have a triple bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. And the nitrogen will have a lone pair on the end. So in order to predict the shape, we're talking about the central atom shape. The terminal atoms do not necessarily have a particular shape. Um, because they're terminal. There's not multiple things to relate. So this angle here to make those two groups as far apart as possible is 180 degree, 80 degrees and it is linear. Okay, our next shape um, is going to have a central atom with three bonds, three bonding electron groups. So for example, uh, this COH2 molecule here we have three different three different atoms um, all around the carbon atom. And so those groups want to be as far apart as possible. So they're going to have a shape that they have 120 degrees between each atom. And, and we call this shape trigonal planar. So it's trigonal planar because there's three things, trigonal, tri, and it's flat, so planar. It's in one plane. So practice structure for this, uh, predict the shape of SO3. So again, pause your video and do this uh, Lewis dot structure. Make sure you get it right and then uh, check it with me. So the shape of this is actually going to be um, sulfur with one double bond to oxygen, and then two different oxygens with only a single bond. And let's add in all of our lone pairs. Okay, 
So you'll notice I went ahead and drew this in the trigonal planar shape to show that these uh, atoms like to be apart. They're 120 degrees from each other and it's trigonal planar. Okay, and now we have a central atom with four bonding electron groups. So now we have four things that we're trying to get as far apart from each other as possible. So to do that, we're gonna need a 3D shape. Um, so this, as you can see, is called, it has about a 109, technically 109.5, but 109 is perfect for our purposes. 109 degree angle to get them as far apart as possible. We call this shape a tetrahedral. So a practice for this. Um, oh, one thing that's really important to talk about is how we draw this. So we have a wedge and a dash. So this means this wedge means it's coming towards us. And the dash means it's going back into the, the plane. Okay. So that's how we would draw that molecule CH4, not like this molecule over here. We do not want to draw it like that. We would want to draw it in a 3D shape whenever possible. So let's practice. Let's draw a Lewis dot structure and predict the shape of CH2Cl2. So uh, pause your video, get your Lewis dot structure ready and check it with me. So um, I'm going to draw it. We have carbon in the middle we're going to have four substituents or four things around it. That was not a good line. One, two, one coming out towards us in a wedge, and then one going back. Okay, and then these four atoms, you can put uh, the atoms wherever you'd like. So you can put chlorines over here and hydrogens over here. They could be in any order, uh, it doesn't matter. So this is our shape that we're going to have. It's 109 degrees and it's tetrahedral. Great job. Okay, and now we're looking at a central atom with four electron groups. However, one of those electron groups is going to be a lone pair. So we're taking a tetrahedral. As you can see, we have that same kind of pyramid shape. And now we're removing one of those groups. So it looks like this shape, which is just tetrahedron minus one. The angle for this is actually going to be slightly less than 109 degrees because of what we said. We have a lone pair, this lone pair here repels other things. And so the lone pair actually takes up more room than the other atoms or the H's in this case. So the relative angle between each of those hydrogens is gonna get a little bit smaller to make room for that lone pair. We call this shape a trigonal pyramidal. So uh, we call it that because we have three parts and it looks like a pyramid. Okay, so again, let's practice one. So we have uh, PCL3. So pause the video, do it on your own, and then meet back with me. So for this, we have phosphorus. I'm going to go ahead and draw the lone pair in. And then three chlorines. One going down, one coming out at us, and one going back into the board. Let's add all of our lone pairs to these chlorines. and that would be our overall answer. So it is appropriate for uh, this molecule to just leave off the lone pairs, that's fine. Um, especially on the phosphorus, you don't need the lone pair on there. But if you were to just draw it like this, you would need to specify that you do have that pyramid type shape. Um, so it to me is helpful to draw in those lone pairs to re remember that, oh yeah, I have something there that's going to change my shape. 
So this is going to be an angle of less than 109 and then trigonal pyramidal. And let's keep chugging along. Now we have a central atom with four electron groups, but two of them are lone pairs, such as water, H2O. In this, the same thing happens. We have two electrons. We take our tetrahedral and then we just remove two of our groups. We call this a bent shape. It's not linear in having the two groups. It's got a bend to it. And the angle, again, is going to be less than 109 because we have two lone pairs that want to take up more space. Um, you can draw this molecule with the wedges and dashes like this, or you can just draw it flat in the plane of the board, but with an angle to it instead of linear. OK, predict the Lewis dot structure and I'm sorry, draw the Lewis dot, dot structure and predict the shape of H2S. So again, pause the video and I'll meet back up with you. And go over the answer. So we have sulfur, two hydrogens, and all of our lone pairs. So again, it's in, it is helpful to draw in these lone pairs, although uh, not fully necessary. OK, and then the shape is bent in a less than 109 degree angle. Okay, so we're going to just keep going along with this. What about multiple mu multiple bonds? So we have predict the Lewis dot structure uh, and the shape of ethylene, so CH2, C2H4. So take a minute and figure out what the structure of C2H4 is going to be. Once you find it out, you'll realize that it is a carbon with a double bond to another carbon. and then two hydrogens on each so that we have a symmetric molecule. So to, to describe the shape of this molecule, what we will need to do is describe the shape of each central atom. So here, we want to look at this carbon and to see the relationship between the three things around the carbon. So let's maybe circle, whoa, let's go back. Let's circle this carbon here. So we have one central atom with three uh, electron groups around it. So this carbon is going to be described as trigonal planar. Okay, this is a symmetric molecule, so you could treat it as such and say each carbon is a trigonal planar, um, but I'm just gonna circle each one and write it. Okay, so if we have uh, multiple central atoms, we're going to need to describe each atom in that. Okay, and then we have another practice molecule uh, for acetylene. So we're going to have carbon with a triple bond of carbon and then hydrogen on either side. So again, we have two central atoms. Each carbon is a central atom. So we need to describe the shape of each. So this carbon here is linear because it has two groups. Each one uh, is going to be as far away from each other as possible, but we don't have any lone pairs. And then this guy is also going to be linear. Okay, so that is where we're going to end this video. Um, going through all of those molecular shapes. Uh, so take a moment to study these. Again, um, also we have on this next page, we have uh, a chart that explains all of these for you in one, uh, one slide instead of the many that we just went through, uh, looking at all the different properties of uh, uh, the molecular shapes. So uh, the next video is going to have some practice of these shapes and making these um, Lewis dot structures and predicting the shapes. So I'll see you guys on that practice video.